Welcome back to Liz Covina. Thanks for tuning in again. Today we're going to talk about psychic ability. Um, I just want to talk about the Clares that, as we call them, um, we're all born with psychic ability with other senses um, and we're actually quite highly tuned when we come in first um, and they just tend to be more dominant but as we go through childhood and the logical brain sets in and you know playing with your friends and talking to your parents and other people um, your senses tend to to kind of dull down these more dominant psychic senses um, but we do carry ones that are particularly dominant in us right through into adulthood so they would be the four main clairs so you've got clairaudience uh, claircognizance clairsentience or clairempathy um, and clairvoyance they would be the four main clairs you do have clairsent and clairgustance um, but they tend to be not very popular in people or not very um, prevalent at any one time they might be something that um, some people pick up on <clears throat> excuse me every now and then but the four main clairs tend to be um, what people present in the psychic world that can be very very strong for them so let's talk about the four main clairs so the first one is clairvoyance so a clairvoyant a natural clairvoyant would see things like a movie in their mind like um a very vivid you might hear kids actually in the background because we're all on lockdown here um so I'm, I'm going to take lots of time to work on ceremony and do videos and stuff and i do waffle so you'll see me looking down at my notebook to rein me back in um but back to clairvoyance so clairvoyance would have a very clear seeing of things uh, in the mind's eye uh, they often are very uh, vivid and they can be past, present or future or the, all of the three. Um, but like that, they play like a movie and oftentimes clair, uh, people that have clairvoyance would daydream a lot. They would just, you know, drift off into daydream um, and all these videos, if you like, would start playing in their mind. As we go into adulthood, because we live in a very non attuned world which is changing as we know because the age of Aquarius is coming so this is all going to be very normal and now is the time to really see what your dom dominant psychic abilities are um, and that's the purpose of this video so somebody say who has um, a lot of clairvoyance in them um, they tend to go into careers like photography um, anything visual arts that sort of thing uh, they have very clear vision in most ways so if that is dominant in you, clairvoyance, um, it's something you should really work on and uh, high, highly tune. Uh, sometimes, you know, you could have a bit of clairvoyance and a bit of clairsentience or something or a bit of clairaudience. So we move on to the next clair and we'll actually we'll talk about clairaudience. What is clairaudience? Well, it's literally like um, a hearing of messages. Again, it's in the, the mind. Um, now, some people can be actually highly tuned enough to audibly hear messages um, I've only met a couple maybe of all the people that I would have been uh, in contact with that would have clear audience highly tuned to the point where it's like actual whispers or actual messages um, that are audible to the naked ear um, but a lot of clear audience is heard in the, the mind's voice um, it can be very clear messages um, like you know a little voice talking to you very similar to you know, hearing voices, are you hearing voices? Um, but no, it, you know, it's there's varying degrees of this. And again, to high tune them, you really need to work on them. But if you are clear audience and you do hear messages, um, there are ways again to really fine tune those. And with the age of Aquarius coming, I'm trying to get everyone to fine tune their abilities in these areas because they're going to serve them well. So the next one is clairsentient. Um, and clairsentient, like I'm, I'm very clairsentient or clair empathy. It basically means that I feel everything. And it's why manifestation comes quite natural to me. I feel everything. I feel everything on an emotional level. My own emotions, spirit emotion, um, emotions in the energy, the collective consciousness, or other people I'm with. So uh, clairsentience is all about feeling and 
really feeling on a deep level and we really need to ground and clear the energy to make sure we're okay because you know when you're picking up everyone's emotions if you're if you yourself are an emotional being and you're walking around picking up other people's emotions it can get very overwhelming but it too has some amazing qualities um, as your dominant psychic ability because you really have a good gut you would really know if you fine-tune it you will really know what to do when to do it what not to do when not to do it um, so the clairsentience among us are the more intuitive, naturally intuitive, um, very in tune with their gut type people. So they're when they get good at it, they're very good decision makers. They're very good at helping people with advice um, based on their gut in instinct. So that's clairsentience. And then we have claircognizance. So that is basically a deep seated, unwavering knowing. We talk in the psychic community all the time about the knowing and it's an actual thing. Um, but I suppose this is a knowing that you, you would have no way of knowing the information that you're so assertive about, that you're so absolutely, like a situation has happened um, and you, you, you just knew it was going to happen. You knew it was happening. You, you're not related to it in any way. Um, so you had no way to know, but you absolutely know. And anyone who has claircognizance is, will tell you that in the knowing, it's literal, like somebody is talking through you. If someone was to uh, second guess your knowing, you would not back down. You would put them in their place immediately. Um, and you know, how bad. I mean, they tend to be the, the, the one with the dominant quality that are unwavering. Um, and it is a fabulous one. So then the two lesser clairs, in my opinion, because you won't see them as often in people and they tend to dip in and out in comparison to the four dominants that I talked about. So a uh, clear scent, it's exactly what it says on the tin. It's a uh, smelling of familiar things uh, that aren't in the vicinity you're in. So for example, a lot of people that would go into buildings, uh, people on paranormal nights, or people that go into old buildings that are highly um, attuned people, tend to smell things that means nothing to them initially until they say, wow, there's, you know, there's a really strong smell of roses here. And maybe your tour guide would say, well, strange you say that now because the lady that owned this house's name was Rose and she was notorious for keeping roses all around the place. So, clear scent in that scent, uh, sense, it's not scent, uh, in that sense is, um, can be a very good thing to have. Um, but again, it tends not to be very dominant. It tends to dip in and out with the, the other dominant psychic abilities. Um, and then there's Claire um, Gustin. I, I'm not even sure how you pronounce that, um, but it is all about taste, isn't it? It's all about, um, you know, maybe getting a taste of iron. And if again, if you're in a place where maybe there was a lot of bloodshed, um, psychics would tend to say that they have a very iron-like taste in their mouth. Um, or well, to be honest, that sort of one is all I've ever heard anyone really say. I was in contact with a girl who, after I went to Lep Castle, um, she contacted me online and she said, oh, you know, I was there. How did you feel the energy? And we were talking about it. And she said when she went up to the chapel, she said she just got this strong taste of iron in her mouth and couldn't get rid of it. And when she was speaking to the owner, he was talking to her about, you know, a lot of bloodshed, obviously, um, in that area. So, um, but they are the lesser clairs. I'm very interested to know what your dominant clair is. Um, and you might have two. I would have a lot of clairvoyance as well. So I would have clairsentience and clairvoyance. Clairsentience been my more dominant because I feel everything. Um, and then the clairvoyance, um, I've been working on that and it is very highly tuned now, but it wasn't one, I had to work on that a lot more um, than the clairsentience, which comes very naturally to me. Um, I have experienced clairsent, but only on occasion and it really only happens um, in my experience when 
someone in spirit is trying to get a message across and they know the person you're speaking to will understand. So say for example, um, on the male line, maybe a granddad who smoked a pipe will come through and you'll get an absolutely very strong, pungent smell of pipe tobacco. And you might mention it in your reading. You might go, there's a very strong smell of pipe tobacco. And then the person, you know, that's sitting there will go, well, my granddad, um, he smoked a pipe. So, um, yeah, so they're, they are the Clares, the four dominant and the two lesser. There are many more um, psychic abilities, but these, in my experience, are the ones that are most dominant in most people, the ones we come in with and get muted as we grow older, but they are certainly very attainable to work on and they will, they will heighten all of your psychic ability. So they're fun to work with. My next video will be, um, or one of my next videos will be about how to fine tune um, those dominant psychic abilities. And I hope you enjoyed it. I don't like to waffle too long because like I said, I am a talker um, and I am aware of that. But hopefully that resonates and I'm very interested to know what is your dominant psychic ability. So if you pop it in um, the comments below and if you like the video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more of this type of content. Or if this doesn't resonate with you, there is there is no need because I am trying to build a community of people who uh, my messages can reach and um, people who can work with them. So have a wonderful weekend. It is Friday the 13th, my favorite day, and I'm sending you an abundance of blessings, which is thanks for tuning in.